Hello, cybersecurity fans, and welcome back to Denver, Colorado. We are here midway through day one of MWISE, and it is such an exciting cybersecurity conversation. I can't wait to continue it. My name is Savannah Peterson here, joined with John Furrier. I'm having a fun time today. Yeah, I know. It's a cool day, Chad. You're going to be <laughs> chewy in the air, but this is a great show. Again, I'm just one of my favorites, and, and this segment's going to be about how AI is impacting security operations. And again, as the world continues to, to go, how do you make it easier and more effective to run operations? operations to, de to defend the, all the threats that are out there. I know, a lot of cool guests. Yeah, great stuff. Speaking of, we get to have Steph back. Steph, oh, for again. Did you miss twice me? This yeah, nice. <laughs> I did, I missed that smile, I missed the energy. Now, I can tell you're even more relaxed for this segment, so I think we're gonna have even, even more fun than we had with Poop in the earlier tonight. <laughs> Peter, welcome to the stage, thanks for taking the time today. New guy, got it, yep, yeah. new, <laughs> new guy. <laughs> well, but you're, you're a CUBE alumni, you're <laughs> actually an OG, I, yeah, was I had like eight years. I had, years. I had black hair back then, so. so like, well, yeah. now you're both now you're both Cube veterans. So you're yeah. part of the collective. You'll be you'll be in John and I's seats next time at at, uh, at next Mandiant. Uh, actually, speaking of Peter, I would love to give you the opportunity. Y'all had an announcement this morning. Yeah, we did. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we have our Google Security Operations Platform, and we announced today that we're now offering our Mandiant Expert Services, Managed Defense, inside the platform, and that allows any of our customers to be able to kind of pivot and, and bring in Mandiant experts inside the platform to help augment their security operation. And so. You know, Mandiant expertise is, is you know, the best on the planet when it comes to cybersecurity, so now being able to team up inside the platform to augment your team, we think is a huge benefit to our customers. So we launched that today, we've got a couple, yeah. couple customers on it already, and, and yeah, super exciting. Yeah. That is exciting, so it's basically an extension for all of your customers' teams, they just got like a VIP squad to come in and help them defend. Yeah. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, we like to think of you know, cybersecurity is a team sport, and it's yeah. an expertise it is. sport, yeah. right? So, the more you can bring expertise to bear to help defend yeah. your company, your employees, what have you, like all day long. So we're excited yeah. to be able to, to do that. And you're, as a CUBE alumni, we did an interview back in 2016. And yeah. What I love about the CUBE doing it for 15 years, you get to go look at the, the tape, as they say, by right now it's the digital bits. Um, we were talking about horizontal and vertical scalability. You know, cloud obviously brought in Gen 1 horizontal scalability, but that vertical specialization in the app is where the domain expertise, that's where the data is, that's where you have that AI really adding value, but also data's got to be horizontally scalable as well, which is, you know, a whole other set of conversations. But I want to get your thoughts because now, running a security operations center, to build a, a real resilient security operation is not trivial because of the distributed nature of the world now, it's distributed yeah. computing. Yeah. Heterogeneous, yeah. Yeah. a lot of tools and technologies available. How do you build this next gen inflection point, a security operation that's resilient, robust, and not compromising the security posture? Sure. Um, we were just so, talking about this. Yeah, we were just talking about this. So, <laughs> That's convenient. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, with us. <laughs> yeah, so to kind of simplify the problem if I can, um, you have a data problem, you have a knowledge problem, and then you have kind of a people action problem to solve in security operations. So getting the data in so you can see all the signals across your network to, to, to have visibility on the attackers and whatnot, then to know what to look for, right? So that's threat intel, that's IOCs. Mandiant has some of the world's best intelligence to be able to tell our customers what to look for. And then what are you going to do about it, which is all the work streams, workflows, and you know, is, is anyone in cybersecurity knows like there's a shortage of people, uh, the actions piece of it is complicated and hard. And so you kind of need all three of those pieces nailed to build a modern security operation. And then what we would sort of say is that at scale, at speed, it sort of implies the next step, which is to the extent we can start automating those pieces using AI, that's where we can provide incredible advantage to our customers. And so that's sort of the journey we've been on and uh, we're really excited to talk about. Yeah, yeah and I said, it's, you know, this is a team sport and I think that convergence too of the different roles, making sure that you're bringing in the expertise of a threat analyst and a yeah. tier two SOC analyst and maybe a cloud security practitioner, to be able to bring those together into a common experience is going to transform the SOC. You know, Taylor was just yeah. on from Google, he's in the office of the CISO, he brought up a great point, which was kind of a dot to connect for us, which is Gen AI is just another app, app security, application security problem. And so that's a data problem. So, so you got data, you got the application security, 
Workflows are huge, uh, Steph. We talked a little bit about it in your last segment. Yeah. This really applies to the security operations. There's a lot of workflows that are end-to-end -end that, are, that are well established, where Gen AI could come in and eliminate some toil. Yeah. Yet also provide capabilities, so you get the benefit of lower cost, higher productivity, but now you have a capability advancement. The ball moves down the field, yeah. your favorite expression. <laughs> yes, so, right. Hey, Wait take us through that, on. because this is an important point, because it's the benefit of getting in early now and putting in that foundation. What's your yeah. thoughts? Yeah, I mean, this is why it's, I think, very exciting to be in user experience right now in the security domain, because Number one, the practitioners need to have tools designed for them at the level at which we would expect it of a consumer experience, right? The level of intuitiveness where things are just starting to happen for you. But the enterprise context, generally that hasn't been prioritized. So we have to sort of manually plunk our way through disparate workflows. Yeah. I do this little piece here and then I have to go over here and I have to be trained to go read docs in order yeah. to do that. And that's what I think is really yeah. a transformative power of both you know, really elevating user experience to be first class in an enterprise context and say, actually, we're all safer, including our consumer yeah, okay. experiences, when we prioritize making the security practitioner's life easier. And we can do that in the traditional UI. Yeah. But I do think that Gen AI, through its ability to take in lots of context from disparate sources, is really uniquely positioned to streamline it. Peter, I want to get your thoughts on this, because if you look at the Gen AI wave, and everyone's hyped up about it, but it is an inflection point, uh, we talked a lot about it on the cube. It, compa it gets compared to the web. And those inflection points, the winners were the ones that reduced the steps it takes to do something, made it intuitive and easy to use. So in the security ops center, I should speak in our language. You guys, I know you're going to jump in on this one. You should. Speak into my heart, but, right? Can you go first. No, no, no. What, uh, what is being reduced if, uh, in, in the ops from a task perspective? Because you know, it used to be how many clicks to find what you're looking for. Again, a Google Axiom. What yeah, is yeah, the security yeah. ops that's going to be reduced with Gen AI? And what's easier and what's, what's the intuitive areas that you see that can be worked on that's being worked on? So, so um, something I think Steph talks a lot about is sort of the, the steps along the way for AI specifically, which is you know, sort of an assisted experience, maybe a guided experience, then maybe semi-autonomous, and then ultimately autonomous, which may or may never happen. But um, along that, I mean, again, back to sort of security operations, it's a, it's a people, it's a process, it's a technology set of issues. Those first two are all human, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so to the extent we can start creating workflows, work streams that begin to automate steps along the way, which is today a very complicated set of work streams. So from onboarding data sources to searching, to creating detection rules, to investigations and remediation, like there's just a ton of complexity along those steps. And yes, we will always look to simplify those experiences through the UI. You can use AI you know, today through assisted experiences, like, hey, let's go find out all the information out there on the planet about what I'm seeing right now. Yeah. And bring that all back and summarize it for me. Now maybe help me write a detection rule while you're at it. So those are steps in the old days that maybe took you know, hours and days, uh, yeah. maybe, and today they can be right at your fingertips and go very, very quickly. So you can respond faster, yeah. you can act faster, uh, and that ultimately is going to reduce your risk and improve your security posture. So we think about it in terms of looking at those work streams and, and really trying to give tools and automation to those practitioners that allow them to go faster, be smarter, yeah. and ultimately reduce the risk posture. Yeah. And have a comprehensive scope of everything that you're talking about. Like Just yeah. like you're talking about all the different pieces coming in together, you're talking about legacy systems, you're talking about new yeah. tools, you're talking about someone's yeah. personal edge device that they happen to be using or whatever to make sure your that's whole right. system yeah. is clear. And there's a lot of different components. Single sign on one app, yeah. you know? There's, I mean, that's, that's some of the early days exciting tasks that we are starting to transform, being able to take disparate data and summarize it so I don't have to know each individual piece and then mental model how that's a risk and what I'm supposed to do about it. To take I am over permissioning and summarize that and then give the next steps to remediate. And then in the future, when it's more semi-autonomous, to just actually handle that for me. So yeah, I never even, risk the what am I going to do with threat. my time instead is great. You know, and that's even in the threat intelligent um, platform that we have today, you know, normally you'd have to go out and look for different sources for OSINT 
data, for example, we're automatically ingesting that now and summarizing it and just taking what would normally be an hour and making it a minute? Yeah, certainly. What am I yeah. going to do with that time now? Yeah. That's so exciting. What a great question to be able to answer. <laughs> yeah, it's like, who doesn't want to be thinking about that? I think it was McKinsey right. we were talking to Rodney uh, back at, at Google Cloud Next, and he actually said the, the, the thing that's going to benefit the most from AI is the dog because you're going to have extra time to go walk the dog and play with your animal. And I always kind of right. think about that in the back of my mind. Thank you, Rodney, for that. I appreciate blood pressure, you. Blood pressure, blood pressure. Yeah, exactly. Really benefit. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Well, we can we can design our, our healthier lives. <laughs> what are some of the, and, and I love that you're so passionate about UX, AI is UX. Like I said, I'm stealing your line forever because I, I care about it as well. And, and this intuitive experience is going to lead to the adoption of everything. But what do you think are some of the big mistakes that companies yeah. make when it comes to security UX in particular? Yeah. Um, well, I definitely think practitioners already have too much that they have to learn across all of their tasks. And so a mistake tends to be um, making them learn a new thing called the AI experience, right? right. So we have a principle which is called in our SecOps um, work, which is called Gemini is all up in your workflows. And that is very specifically, we want Gemini to be baked in to the existing inputs, for example, today, you know, a practitioner using Gemini and Se or using SecOps might search their SIM using, you know, the query language that they have very, like, and unfortunately had a to toil to learn. Right. But basically now, their own SQL query at that point. Yeah. Yeah. But in that same interface now, they can use natural language inputs. And what we've seen over time is that by baking AI into the user experience first, once they start you know, experimenting with it, we start to see that usage go up. Yeah. Um, and this has been the kind of data that gives us some win in our sales, that that is the right UX strategy, is to infuse AI rather than to create standalone systems that are abstracted away from the tools that the practitioners are already using. Uh, on that point, I think it's, most people try to hit the home run with technology as we use the baseball metaphor, just hit a couple singles. So yeah. the question for you guys is, what do you see as that those quick wins? to get, get that going because there is that experimentation where people are learning, wow, I like this better, yeah. and we experience it all of ourselves when we use uh, Gemini and AI, it's like, oh, that prompt, I should do it better. The this intuitive learning yeah. in AI as you use it, what are some of the wins to get that flywheel going, to yeah. get that adoption up? What, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, I have a quick response, but curious yours too. Yeah, I, I mean, Again, I, I think about it like, what are the high barriers to entry to getting proficiency in a product, right? It could be learning a query language, it could be mm -hmm. learning about the data that you're seeing, trying to connect dots around it in terms of like, is this good, is this bad, and, and be able to research that. So if we can make that stuff easy, those are really quick wins because you're going to get more use of the product, more easy use of the product, you get faster adoption of the product, you're hopefully going to get that practitioner to doing things that maybe before were kind of grunt work to now that's more strategic in terms of looking at your tax surface. Let's figure out how we are going to monitor that and, and reduce risk here or there across you know, the different attack surfaces that we're managing. And so the more we can kind of reduce the toil aspects along the way, those are always quick wins, right? And, yeah. and that is going to win a lot of uh, a loyalty, we hope, from our users. I think so. a, few, a few specific examples right now in, um, in our uh, GTI platform, we have a feature called Code Insight, and so Gemini just automatically um, inspects any file and then summarizes that. That's for any file that's uploaded. And, um, and then we've also got um, a rule, rule de or detection generation. I mentioned that earlier today. In fact, um, I can put in my natural language what I want to have happen. It's going to give me all the semantic that I need in order to get this thing created and deployed. Yeah. And then finally, playbook generation is another one. I want to put in how I want this thing yeah. to respond. I can put that in a natural language. It goes, Gemini gives me the playbook that I'm able to run. These are the super time savers that I would just, would just say, take. Yeah. Great Even example. For an experienced, you know, you know, analyst, it would take hours. You know, it's interesting. Savannah, I do a lot of research as well as as well as well as our lives, as yeah. well as commentary. But one of the things you mentioned is insights. One of the things that's coming out of this Gen AI wave is that you see insights become a really not just a punchline or hyperbole, a real value. And you mentioned uh, the other piece of impact. So I want to get you guys thoughts on uh, something we're seeing as kind of new categorical value. Real-time insights or high-frequency insights and impact and influence. 
Mm-hmm. And I, don't, I mean, influence in the way of influencing someone's job and whatnot. What's your guys' thoughts on that? Do you, do you see similar uh, trends in that area? Uh, well, insights, impact, influence. I, I mean, let me speak to insights for a moment because, and we're a little bit of a broken record on this, but I'll hit it again. You know, so we have these incredible experts called Mandian, right? And we have incredible experts inside of Google. And imagine taking all those brains and making them available real time, right, to help answer a question, to help give, give you insights, right, into something that you're seeing. You know, that is table stakes. You know, we have that in the product. That is a huge, powerful way to create those insights that might take hours or days to piece together over time. And those insights allow you then to take action. So I think for sure, like insights is a key thing we are seeing as a benefit. Um, I think influence is then, you know, so if you can also, for example, use the security operations example again, take those insights and share those out in your organization, you know, to, to create more credible bases for taking action, for prioritizing something. I think there is the ability to influence because you have better data, better insights to share across an organization. So I think it helps in, in both of those ways. It's, it's also, I think, it's context and agents. So all the things that you just mentioned, Gemini is uniquely positioned to take yeah. all of that in and generate recommendations. But with specialized agents that are understand how security work gets done, doing the monitoring, knowing the business context, which is super hard, this customer cares more about this than that, is gonna be required in order to be able to surface the right risks. Because you know, an insight for one company that has already accepted yeah. a particular risk is noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Gemini has to get really good at taking in all of these inputs and then we have to have agents who are specialized to particular outcomes, who then in the combination of that surface to the user, what is truly helpful. So to go full circle then on that, then in uh, context drives situational awareness augmentation to yeah. the security practitioner. Yeah. So then we can move toward that semi-autonomy on yeah. the agent side, yeah, that's right. That business context piece is so critical. To, to your point, not everyone prioritizes the same threats or risks across their observability or across their entire organization. I mean, it's, right. I hadn't really thought about Gemini or any AI having to make that decision on its own to understand what is a priority or what someone's, are, someone's already accepted might be just a part of their threat yeah. landscape. I mean, I think it's a while to think about, honestly, <laughs> now that I'm sitting in this moment. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's a promise and we're not. We've got so much work to do. We're not, you know, past the assistive stage, and we've even got to build a lot of trust with the user in being able to give them those productivity boosts, like I mentioned, right? Um, but there is going to be a future state in which we have um, more of the business context, and Gemini is going to start making more opinionated recommendations with a specialization of something like a SecLM, a specialized security language model that goes into con- um, concert with that where now Gemini can become much more of the sort of uh, guide that you would want. Yeah. Who might say, "Do you? I've noticed that you don't ever action this thing that we keep prioritizing for you. Do you want to go ahead and should I ignore this in the future? Now the human is actually accepting risk and training Gemini. Yeah. That sort of future state yeah. is where we're going. We're not there because yeah. we had a lot of work to do to yeah. get there. But I think that is what is going to enable teams to work more effectively. Yeah, and I want yeah. to build on that because that is, that's a transformation of security operations in the future where today you have detection engineers saying, hey, I want to go query my network to look for this bad IP to make sure it's not anywhere in my network and you know, indicating someone's in my network and I want to be in there, et cetera. Imagine in the future you have agents that are able to go perform hunt functions or other types of functions and that same engineer is now des- helping configure and design agents because they have knowledge of their own infrastructure right. and their own crown jewels, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, assets, so to speak. And they're really managing a fleet of AI that yeah. is going out there yeah. performing these functions and bringing back outcomes. And so yeah. that is one way for sure we know this is going to evolve in the yeah. future and what we're- That's exactly real impact right there. Yeah, yeah that's real, real impact to the, the security posture. Yeah, no, it is. And it also helps build that trust that you're talking about within the user experience. Just, yeah. You know, it's learning from you. It's not just, okay, so I asked this to our last guest, and I'm really curious to ask you two because you're both quite smart, and especially since you've been on both the Google <laughs> and the Mandiant side. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a very authentic and blunt person, so I'm not just being nice to you. <laughs> you're probably thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, this is not why I think. Well, it is a clever question, because okay. I think, and I'm very yeah. curious to hear both your perspectives. Yeah. What do you think is the most overhyped thing right now in security? 
AI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's the nervousness. I mean, it's understandable because there's so much new risk. Yeah. There are yeah. AI native risks. Yeah. Prompt injection is a real thing. Now you're talking Being about concerned yeah. your company might make a promise to a customer that you can't keep because yeah. it deployed AI. Like all of these things are totally legitimate concerns, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but I do think that the, the sort of where we are in today's state, um, there's a lot of hype around what AI is doing and it's not quite doing that yet, right? And it's because we need to deploy it responsibly. We, especially in security though, we need to have exactly. such a level of precision yeah. and substance in every single thing that the practitioner sees before we would put it in front of a customer too. We've got a lot of work to do there still. So I think um, the fear around autonomous or that like, you know, tomorrow entire teams are going to be eliminated because of AI is a little overhyped. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kevin Mandy instead of the stage, Kevin, Kevin Mandy instead of the stage, Gen AI is coming, your users will use it, get your policies. So my final question for you yeah. guys is on that security risk piece on AI, because it is here, the, uh, the Open Worldwide Applications Security Project listed the following things as the top areas, prompt injections, you mentioned that, yeah. training, yeah. data poisoning, yeah. 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 and sensitive information disclosure. Yeah. Yep. Your thoughts yeah. around that, and is that accurate in your opinion? What did I miss? Is there anything yeah. top, top or high order bit above that? Yeah, I mean, spot on, our, our CISO's office, created last year a white paper declaring a SAIF framework, S-A-I-F, which is sort of a guide for how organizations who are really trying to bring AI into their yep. um, workflows need to be able to start thinking about these protections, right? But of course we have, in, in Google, we already have some things like sensitive data protection, which is live today. We've got things like model armor, which is in preview, which is really, you know, helping to protect applications and across four different layers we're working on solutions to secure AI, the model, the application, the infrastructure, and the data. And so the, the three that you just named right now are top of mind, right? Okay, and all of, you know, I think all of us, because we want AI to be, you know, really transformative and realize its potential are focused on making sure we're yeah. addressing both sides of the coin, securing the platform so that you can do AI and then enabling the practitioner with it's, it. Everyone talks about prompt injections, but the training data, if you get that early, it's like getting in the mind of a child and in preschool, you can inject biases. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the whole data. What an analogy, really, John. I mean, it's like getting early. I mean, because that's going to impact all the reasoning yeah. and all the inference. Yeah, there, there's a whole movement around data as code. You've probably heard about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think, I think we coined that, that term. Data as being so that you're going to be inspecting and managing like you would a code repository. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if you think about also then, we have customers putting their data in to train models. Um, you really have to have a, a very disciplined framework around how to treat that data you know, making sure that we're not bringing anything on board that would be sensitive or PII or otherwise. And those are all the kind of things that Google thinks about all day long because yeah. we have to deal with that in the real world uh, all the time. Yeah, so. definitely. Peter, you didn't get a chance to answer. Do you agree with Steph that oh, AI yeah. is the most high? I, he <laughs> I'm not letting this go yet. I'm not yeah. done. Yeah, are we still talking about the singularity merging soon? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, artificial uh, general uh, intelligence, uh, here we go. I, I mean, I'm all for Star Trek, so yeah. like, I, I, it's 100% AI, yeah. 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 We have a few alumni that said everything yeah. in Star Trek will be invented. Yeah. Yeah. Except for <laughs> teleportation, and that's still AGI potentially. I want teleportation though. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to fly United ever again. Sorry, Denver. Yeah. No. I <laughs> yeah. No. I, I listen. I think. I think uh, there's such great potential, but we have a journey ahead of us, and so I think, uh, you know. I'll just sort of say we are very grounded and try to help our customers, help at the workflow level, help at the user level, and that's kind of keeping us from getting too bullish on, you know, and speaking about where this can go like next week, next month, but we think over the next several years, yeah. five years from now, things are going to look very, very different. Your yeah. security operations organization is going to look different, different org chart, uh, investing in different things, and so we think in that time frame there will be some very big changes. And the game is still the same, the asymmetry between offense and defense, Yeah, getting that yep. right, yep. 100 percent 100 percent yeah for sure i love it well this was a very grounded conversation and grounding our ai and grounding no, our AI. AI. No, 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 no. Conversations at this table we're even warming up a little bit in here i love it thank, steph, here. thank you both so much we could have chatted Likewise. all day yeah, like we'll be back thank on the show you. i mean steph's moving into the desk so yeah. you know, you're next. Now, now we're bringing you in that, <laughs> she's, she's, not she's not always in well, second grade now yeah oh, oh. Okay. so all right we're yeah. maturing we're training, training here training. i'm getting trained and i'm soon to infer <laughs> well, thanks for having us. 
favorite about the ship, 17 the road jokes I could make right now, but I'm not going to make any of them. You'll have to tune into the Cube After Dark for those. No, just kidding. Uh, my name is Sarah Peterson. We're here at MYS in Denver, Colorado. You're watching the Cube, the leading source for cybersecurity news.